Uh, obviously, you know, exciting day for us, even though we had kind of a team workout yesterday. Um, but, you know, the first day of official, official practice always brings a little extra juice to you. Um, we've had a good summer, good preseason with our, with our new guys and our returning guys. Um, you know, I think that this is a new uh, age when it comes to college basketball. You're seeing it in college football quite a bit with the impact of the transfer market and guys that are able to come into a new place and make an immediate impact. I think you're going to see it maybe even more pronounced in college basketball just due to the fact of the sheer number of how many guys have uh, taken advantage of the perfect storm that was created with the additional year of eligibility and then the immediate eligibility rule uh, being in, in place. So um, with us, obviously, it, it, the returners, Caleb Murphy's had a tremendous spring and summer and early fall. Um, looking for big things from him, take that next step. Um, Russell has done a great job of, you know, continuing his development. He just needs, you know, playing time and to play. Um, and then Jameer Chaplin's probably made the biggest jump, short flashes last year, uh, but has really done a good job this spring, summer, and fall in terms of developing his overall game. And the new guys coming in are all going to make an impact. Uh, Remains to be seen how big, uh, but we're, we're deep, uh, we're long, we're athletic, we're a better shooting team. Uh, basketball skill IQ has been very noticeable in terms of the summer workouts and the fall workouts. So again, you know, I'm excited about what, uh, what we can build. Obviously the biggest challenge now in college basketball for us and for other programs is putting all the pieces together and having everybody kind of figure out their roles and accept those roles and then go out there and play those roles. So that's kind of where we're at right now and obviously a lot of different topics out there, but kind of started off with that and open it up for any questions. Coach, first of all, thanks for doing this today. You, you mentioned Caleb. Uh, could you talk about the point guard position? What, what are your thoughts on where you are now and what are you going to be looking for over the next 43 days? Well, I think, you know, again, we, with Caleb, I think prior to the shutdown last year, after the first six games and the non-conference games, you know, he had one more freshman of the year honors than anybody in the league and was right on track to probably be neck and neck in terms of winning that thing. Um, you saw some progression during the season, but I, I, I really think that last year was the toughest on those new freshmen because they didn't get the same preparation time and the practice time and the preseason and the summer training and all that. And then, you know, we, we, we threw them to the wolves a little bit as, a, as, you know, our starting point guard and playing the amount of minutes that he had. Um, I think the two areas with him that have, have developed and grown the most is his ability to shoot the ball, in particular creating his own shot and making those shots, and just his decision making. You know, as a point guard, he's got to be at, you know, a two to one, three to one assist to turnover ratio. Uh, that's a lot to ask for a freshman last year, but it's not too much to ask for him as a sophomore. Obviously, um, Trey Moss is what I felt was, if not the top, one of the top two or three point guards coming out of the high school ranks in the state of Florida. Um, he's got a bright future in front of him. He's learning from a guy that it obviously knows the position and knows our system. So he's making very good strides as well. Um, and then with the two other guards, I can, you can slide over and play them with Javon Green and with Sorrell Smith as well. Both those guys can handle the duty of, of running the offense and getting us in our stuff as well. So I think that's a position that's pretty well taken care of right now. You mentioned Sorrell. Any word from the NCAA on, on whether he's going to be able to play this season? It, we, the, the waiver has been, uh, you know, put in because um, he falls under the category of a, a second transfer. Obviously, there was some situations that had, had occurred at this, you know, the, the, his last school, um, and so yeah, we put that in, and we're just waiting word on that one. When you look at your newcomers, it looks like Javon Green has the most contributions experience 
and maybe it's the most sophisticated guy you bring in. Is that, is that the case when you look at all the newcomers? That he's he's got the best body of work. Yeah, yeah. We, I, you know, it's 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 interesting because obviously he's played four years of college basketball, and like ninety five percent of the seniors last year that ended their eligibility or ended their you know graduated <coughs> from the school that they were at. I think it was 95% moved on to other schools, those that were taking advantage of that additional fifth year, super senior year. Um, but when you look at his body of work over the four years, over 1,000 points, over 500 rebounds, over 300 assists, over 100 steals, uh, if he had those numbers here at South Florida, he would go down as one of the greatest players that's ever played here. You know what I mean? Uh, so he had a tremendous career at George Mason. Plus, he's played in over 100 college basketball games, so that makes a big difference, too. Um, there's no doubt that he's going to be able to make an immediate impact in our program. His ability to score the ball, shoot the ball, and he's a, he's a high-quality guard when it comes to decision-making and so forth. Now, it's a different system, uh, but some of the stuff that we're doing, he's very comfortable with as well. So that maturity, uh, obviously, uh, translates well into him being able from day one to, to be a key contributor for us. Plus the maturity level that he, that, he, that he brings. You know, the interesting point, according to true eligibility, he's the only senior on the team. Sorrell would be the only junior on the team. Everybody else is a freshman or sophomore when it comes to eligibility, you know. But we only have one player that hasn't played a college basketball game. So figure that out. That's <laughs> what, you know. it's tough, it's tough to figure. Yeah, it is. I, I, I asked, what, what are we going to list these guys in the program? You know what I mean? What are we going to list them? You know, uh, uh, you know, Sam Hines played 25 plus minutes a game for 28 games last year at the University of Denver. He's a freshman. You know, so. How's he? How's he doing? He's doing great. Yeah, yeah. He's, um, you know, very similar. You, you, you have different situations with this whole transfer world. All right. And this is here to stay, guys. Every year, college basketball, you're going to have four to six new players due to transfers. You know, in football, you know, you're seeing the impact that they've made in our program, programs across the country. Uh, but they're different different ways to do it. And the other thing with that is I think there used to be a negative connotation with a transfer, either on the program that they were leaving or on the kid himself. Those days are long gone as well. Um, Sam is one of those guys who was bumping up a level or two coming from the University of Denver to South Florida. Uh, very similar to LaQuincy Rido from a couple years ago. And there's obviously different positions, but a lot of the similarities. A little bit of a chip on his shoulder, successful at that lower level uh, because of his, his uh, toughness and work ethic and, and competitiveness. Uh, that jump is not going to be, you know, uh, one that's difficult. He's made, you know, in our workouts and practices, I love the kid. I think he's got an unbelievable future because he's, a great size, can play multiple positions, and is really good at um, creating shots for other people with his driving ability and, and so forth. And he just, he plays hard every single possession. So in our program, that that's exactly what we're looking for. Because of this new environment um, with the transfers and all, is, is, are we at an age where any information you cling to, because you never know, you got to, be aware of everything that's going on in the world because this kid may play for me one day kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, you, you, two things that are going to happen is even when you, you, you're going to go out and recruit and recruit hard, right, like we do, but even if a kid doesn't, I would say the best answer is yes, the next best answer is no, okay? But the no becomes even more important because you want to have that no end up on a positive note and, and continue a good relationship with the people around and coaches, not family members or the kid. We're different than football. Once a kid verbally commits, we stop recruiting. In the football world, that's obviously not the case, you know. Uh, 
in basketball for the most part it is. Uh, but you could get them on the second time around. The other thing is where it changes is you are always recruiting your own players. You're always recruiting them, you know. Uh, and, and sometimes uh, that's not always a good thing. You know, that's not always a good thing. But it's just, it, again, it, it, it's not for me to judge what's good or bad. I just have to deal in the reality that that's the way things are going to be now. You know what I mean? That that's the way things are going to be. So um, I think it's, there's a lot of positives with it for the players, but obviously there's some challenges as well. 1,700 in the transfer portal for men's basketball. And last I looked, and I'm, I'm not 100%, over 400 did not find a new home. So that meant 400 kids last year had scholarships to play college basketball that have nothing right now. You know what I mean? And that's that's a bitter pill to swallow. You know. So. So when you when you when you go from this environment that we're all accustomed to our whole lives of you know. Getting kid playing time, experience. You got a lot of seniors coming back. That's, that that has value to now like a, a, a new team. Can you can you process that? Can you build a team like that now? Is, or, it's what it, it remains yeah, to be I, seen. I, I, I think the, the couple things is this. I think you can build a team. It'd be harder to build the culture of the program that has a, a, a consistent seed to it because they're just the possibility of guys out. Majority of the guys may not be around for, for four years. You know what I mean. And what what school do do these guys go back for homecoming to? <laughs> Seriously, yeah. You, you know what I mean. Uh, is, is it the place they ended at? Is it the place they played three years at? Or in some of these guys? Because remember now, any senior this year that is finishing his fourth year at the school he was at. If he graduates, he can go somewhere else next year because he gets that extra year because he's only a junior. You know, so that those are the those are the challenges um, that we're just going to have to to navigate through. You know, and un, un, unfortunately, um, it does lead to some lack of solidarity within the program on that continual basis. But again, I, I think. Whereas coaches, you get you make the mistake is if you're trying to judge if it's right or wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just as the players say, it is what it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you ha you have to you have to navigate through that. And um, through my career, I've had transfers that have left that I thought were making a mistake, and where they went, it proved me right that they did make a mistake. And there was other ones that went and had great careers. And I've had guys that have come and have blossomed and it was the best move they ever made. You know what I mean? So um, usually the one thing is, no matter what, if there isn't a change made in that, in that player in some capacity, they're probably going to get the same stuff they got at the last place. You know what I mean? Because there's that growth that has to, that has to happen. And I think you know what you're doing in, in this recruiting world now is you're betting on those that those guys are going to grow within your program. Coach, now the schedule's out. When you think about it, it's been your uh, winter wonderland in Hawaii. It's yeah, out. yeah. You, you know, um, again, there's there a lot of lot of things up in the air in the spring when you're trying to put together the, the schedule, and then you had to look back at games that were canceled from the year before. Did you have to replay them and different things like that? So with all things considered, you know, the opportunity to go to Honolulu and play over Christmas is a little bit of a challenge because it butts up against the conference schedule and so forth. Uh, but our league has created an alliance with that, with that tournament. So there'll be a, 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 a team from our league who will always play in that tournament. We decided, Michael and I sat down and said, let's be the first one. So we decided to do that. Um, and then we built the schedule around that opportunity. We, we had to play Boston College from the home game from two years ago. So opportunity to play it in, uh, against an ACC school. Obviously, getting the, the game against Florida in Sunrise 
as I said, uh, you can quote me on it, put it in the wherever you want. We play in that in that event every year if we could. You know, it's always great to play in that event, uh, the Orange Bowl Classic. Um, the opportunity to, to go downtown and play at Amelie against the top ten team in Auburn, uh, and then the the the, the rest of non-conference home games against again quality opponents. Uh, teams that will, at the end of the non-conference, will put us in a position RPI-wise when we look at the total mix of teams in a good spot. And then obviously that the conference schedule is coming out and, uh, you know, you got two teams that are right now at least preseason, people are talking about Final Four teams in Memphis and Houston, uh, and they, they don't even mention the last two champions in our league. Tulsa won it two years ago, tied with Cincinnati, and then obviously Wichita won it last year. So our league will be as good as it's ever been, if not better, in, in my four previous years. You take a look at this roster. I mean, it's probably the most newcomers you've had since your first, second year here. Do you feel like you're kind of starting over a little bit, or, you know, or do you feel like you're still progressing the program even with a bunch of newcomers? Yeah, I mean, I, I obviously, I think you know when, when you're when you're in the building process and you're starting from where we started, uh, nothing is going to be linear. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be fast. It's not going to be convenient. You know, uh, no one three years ago foresaw that this was going to occur with the combination of COVID and the extra year of eligibility and the transfer thing. So you got to adapt and adjust. Um, but with that, it's a pretty good place to start with Murphy and Chaplin. Murphy, who's played significant minutes, Chaplin. Russell, who played in every game last year for us as well. We didn't necessarily have that the first year. Um, and then, and then the second piece is um, these guys all played last year. So with the immediate eligibility, puts us in a position using that transfer portal to continue to build our talent pool, but also bring in guys that do things the way we want to do them. You know, I mean, we, when Caleb Murphy it was the highest rated recruit since they had the numbers that signed here, and then Corey Walker is the second highest top 75 player in the country. And if you just take a look at our roster, and if you would have said, okay, three years ago, Sorrell Smith would have committed here, there would have been a parade from St. Pete to Tampa, <laughs> right? Or that we got Corey Walker. You know, people would have been, you know, uh, you know, go down the list. You know, we recruited Jalen McCreary coming out of high school. He chose South Carolina over us, playing in the SEC. We recruited Byron Matos, and he signed with Mississippi State. There was a change there, and he went to New Mexico. I mean, so you just keep don't going down the list, and. and uh, the, the, big, the biggest key is, again, those guys getting in here, getting situated, and being able to come together. When you, besides Russell, 